How's it going, guys? Welcome back to Season 5, NHL 19, Seattle Kraken Expansion Mode Series. Uh, sorry for this one taking a bit longer. I just had a bunch of other videos I was working on. Uh, if you guys missed the last episode, unfortunately, uh, we made the playoffs, but we were a first-round exit. Uh, still looking for our first Stanley Cup here, as you can see there. Knocked out four games to one in the first round against the Ducks. Uh, for an expansion team, we have done pretty well. Pretty sure we made the playoffs three of four years so far. Uh, unfortunately, I just haven't had much playoff success. And real quick, guys, I want to thank Puzzle Hockey for sponsoring today's video. If you guys haven't heard about it yet, it's actually a mobile game for both iOS and Android. Basically combines match-free gameplay with authentic hockey minigames. Also, too, they actually have real-life NHL superstars in this game. So your McDavid's, Crosby's, Matthews, etc. Uh, basically, the purpose of the game is kind of building, like, your superstar team. Uh, you'll go in, play the puzzles, try and get combos. Uh, when you do activate a combo, you'll actually then be put into, a, like, a live sequence and playing the hockey minigame. Maybe you're trying to, like, make a breakout pass or even score a goal. And not only can you score, but still can the computer. So uh, sometimes you can have to play goalie, trying to make a big save and uh, stop them just like real hockey you know you're just trying to beat them on the scoreboard it's also very cool how you can even unlock new players obviously you're gonna be collecting your coins your diamonds things like that uh, you open up lockers to get more of those as well as new players and another cool thing about the players is that they all have their own unique abilities and power-ups so there's definitely a lot of strategy that goes into how you mix and match them when building your team i feel like this is definitely one of the best mobile hockey games on the market right now and it's completely free to download so no reason not to give it a try i'll have download links in the description for both ios and android I hope you guys enjoy the game. Now, let's get back to the video. Um, hopefully here we can have a decent draft. Uh, basically just all late picks. But our team right now is very, very good. of a solid young core. Uh, I think I mentioned in the last episode, our average age is probably something like 27. So uh, definitely a team that's built to win now and in the future. I uh, just gotta hope it starts happening in the playoffs. We'll probably make a trade or two in the off season, potentially. Uh, we made a big trade obviously last time for Austin Matthews. Um, I don't know. We'll see kind of what's out there in free agency as well. Um, St. Louis here wants to give us a third and a sixth for our third. Uh, their next year's picks though. So I'm going to say no because we don't even have that many picks this year. So our first pick here, number 13 in the third round. Um, let's see what happened with the top picks. 84 overall, Nichols, first overall. That's insane. Medium elite. That's, I think, the highest I've seen any player rated out of the draft. A couple 79s there. One medium elite, one's unknown, probably medium elite. Same goes to the fourth and fifth guys. So that's pretty nasty uh, pick there. First overall by LA. Good chance actually they could pick first overall this year. Potentially get Jack Hughes. Uh, so Molson here could be a low elite. What I've actually had a lot more success doing lately is just going by what our scouts have found. Like this guy here, guaranteed medium elite. Who cares what he's rated? That's insane. Uh, obviously there you can see he's a gem as well. Uh, we'll see if we have actually any other gems. Sorted by potential there. We do have two gems. This guy's a low elite, Langdon, and then this dude here is a bust. So pick number 77 is pretty early for the 120. I don't want to risk not getting him. There's another team that maybe could take him by the time we nick pick next at like the 100 range. So might as well go for it. 49 overall. So okay, he's definitely more of a project player, but still medium elite in the third round. It's a nasty pick. And okay, good. I didn't even realize we didn't have a fourth round pick. We actually... Good, yeah, pick next picks 140. There's a good chance we could miss out on that guy. Um, Raquel here, low top six. That's pretty good, especially since he's also the next highest uh, like supposed to go. Um, could also take a chance on some of these guys who might be medium elite. And then when's the other guy supposed to go? 250. Yeah, so we can probably wait on him. I think. Or actually, sorry, I want to go and just take that low top six because he is like guaranteed. Um, and I think we still have a couple more picks, so we'll take him. Maybe he's a bit higher rated. 58. Not too bad. Our next pick here, number 21 in the sixth round. Um, pick number 181. So we'll probably take the low elite at this point just to make sure we get him. Uh, there's actually two guys guaranteed low elite, but this one's a gem, so maybe he's a bit higher rated. Also, could even take Sikola, whatever his name is, uh, with one of those picks too. 49 overall, okay. So definitely more of a project. Maybe here even we could t trade for Ottawa's pick and take a chance on that medium elite guy. Um, let's see what it cost. All right, so right now I'm offering Ottawa 2023rd sixth rounder and a 2025th seventh rounder for their sixth round pick this year. And they do say yes. Okay, so that's good. I'm probably going to take a risk now with this next pick and take that guy who might be medium elite. And then hopefully with our pick after that, um, the guaranteed low elite guy is still available. Uh, they're very similar rated though. So yeah, I'm going to take a chance on Sikola. We'll see what his rating is. Uh, 63, that's pretty high for a sixth rounder. Maybe he is medium elite. That would be such a steal. And then sent down pick here. Hopefully the other guy, uh, guaranteed low elite, still available. Some low top nines, which really don't have much value at all. 
And then Oshi is still there. I didn't realize that was his name, so that's pretty awesome. Um, honestly, again, didn't have a lot of um, high round picks. We didn't have a first or second for like, what was that, the second straight year at least. And I still feel like we made out pretty well. Again, got a medium elite in Reese, so definitely can't be upset. Our scouts are doing pretty well so far. And we're going to have to resign phase here, guys. As you can see, I have just under $8 million in cap space. Um, all of our top players that were locked up. Uh, Matthew's there making quite a bit of money, almost $13 million, but 90 overall, 24 years old, highly potential. Should be able to get up to like a 92 or 93. Uh, Quinn Hughes, look at this contract now. He grew all the way to an 88, and we locked him up a long term when he was like an 82 for four and a half million. So that is a great, great contract, kind of like maybe Roman Yossi esque. Uh, Peyton Krebs is gonna get paid. Same with Curry Dodge. Luckily, still two more years on their entry levels. This could be a big year for us. Like this is the year we go for a cup when we have this good of players, you know, making that cheap of money. Kaprizov, Milroy, Shankirk, like so many guys locked up. So we'll go position by position here. Uh, Frost and Quill need new deals. Coil doesn't want to resign. That's okay. It's more of just like a deadline ad anyway. Frost in 83 only wants 2.9. That's very, very fair. Uh, usually they want like a lot more, probably because he is an RFA. Um, Odette and the rest of the guys will probably just sign to be in the AHL. Looking at left wingers here, Krebs, Kaprizov, Bailey, Kachuk all locked up. Kachuk I might have overpaid by a bit. Gave him three and a half, but I mean, he's still young, so I think he could definitely grow. Uh, Gord there making three million for one more year. Timoshov obviously is a nice fourth line forward. Only wants 950k. Uh, that's an insane steal, I think, for an 80 overall player. And just like the center's going to lock up Fogel, Lewis, all these kind of like low to mid-70 uh, AHL players. And then right wingers here, we have Milroy and Spruev. Um, Studenik and Watson both in new deals. Watson's 26 now and 73. Was hoping for, you know, a big, I don't know, comeback from him. Didn't quite happen. Studenik, I guess, will keep. And then defense here, so right there's our top six. It's looking pretty solid, honestly. Like, it doesn't get much better than that. I feel like we just got unlucky last year. I mean, I know some people were saying we had to change the team up because we didn't have a good mix of players in that, but I don't know. Like, the team's pretty solid. Ty Smith, oh, we're not giving him that for 78, so we'll qualify him. Hopefully no one makes him an offer. Um, Sandin, okay, 76 is not worth that. He still really hasn't come along as much as I wanted him to. He's 22 right now and 76. Anglin's 26 and 75. I think I'm going to let him go at this point basically done growing uh give time to some of the younger guys and then finally here guys looking at the goalies uh samsonov 90 overall making six mil kind of like hughes that's such an undervalued contract but he's only got two more years left on it uh soroka needs a new deal very good backup does want to resign with us at least 1.8 for one year um he doesn't get that much more expensive he's got one more year to grow i wouldn't mind him just being our backup behind samsonov the rest of the time uh so that'd be a five-year deal Goes up to 2.3, so maybe three years is the sweet spot. Let's try three years at 1.9. I think that's pretty solid. Um, this Erickson Eck goalie turned out to be pretty good. He's 74, good AHL starter, I feel. Um, Enroth here, 21 and 71 is a good AHL backup. These two fringe starters, uh, the low will definitely like go. The medium, I think we'll just keep because maybe he turns into something or. We can trade them. All right, guys, we're now at the free agency period. Uh, one thing that hasn't happened in a while is every single guy we made an offer on actually said yes. So um, that was pretty nice. I didn't have to worry about any other contracts. Nathan McKinnon is a free agent. Oh, my God. Uh, wants $12.3 million, though. 90 overall. 26 years old. So one year left to grow. Basically like a Matthews contract. Forsberg wants $12 million. Uh, he's a year older. 91 overall. Jeez. Tarasenko as well. This is like the biggest free agent class I've ever seen. Like McKinnon, Forsberg, Tarasenko at the top. A 90 overall Dumba. Nicholas Backstrom, Alex Wenberg. Ryan O'Reilly's 89. Ghost, Huber Doe, Tara Vinen. That's insane. Like there's so many good players here. Tara Vinen for 6.5 is really good. Like he's only an, he's an 86. He's costing you half McKinnon, only four overall below. Like that's not bad at all. Um, that's pretty insane, honestly. So this would be like the year if you were like a new team or whatever and you had... 80 million to cap or cast right now is 90 million so imagine you have like 90 million to spend and you just build a team straight out of free agency uh even nuge is here so we have 4.5 million and all we really need honestly is a fourth line center um even a fourth line winger we can move brady kachuk to center we already have our six defensemen we already have our starting backup goaltender and obviously we can't really sign anyone too expensive because we need that money next year uh for krebs and dodge but i'm just kind of going through like uh kind of amazed at how many good players in free agency right now like, that is honestly insane. Krasov, he's, like, he's actually a UFA. Uh, we know he has high top six. I can't believe they didn't re-sign him. 22 years old, so that's weird. They must have gave him, like, 
a one-year deal and then didn't extend him. So I think he's the guy we go after. Uh, he would just make our bomb six that much better. Five for 3.8. Might as well go for it. Um, a lot for the 3.5. Which is another, I think, possibly very, very good contract if he does end up growing. Like I was saying, because we only need one player, we'll just check two ways now. If he says no, we'll try and uh, get someone else. Uh, let's see here. Potential. The chance this... Oh, this guy is exact elite. Oh, Sumla, because he's no more... Uh, potentially, he's too old. Jarvan, though, could be elite. He's 19. Um, how many roster spots do we have? Six. I mean, might as well take a chance like what's the worst case scenario he's 55 with like medium top nine even low top nine who cares right uh bode wild i don't know how he's here uh we're definitely making a contract offer on him or right, looks like he's florida oh i thought florida had his rights but they just won as well so that'd be sick we get him he does have low top four uh this is obviously before they actually added bode wild to the game so it's still the one that i made i'm um, gonna see if there's anyone else decent available uh potentially 19 maybe a medium top nine i don't think that's quite good enough to sign Guaranteed low top 9, 20 and 60. Probably not good enough to sign. So it looks like it for the forward, but still, actually, there's still a couple of good players there if you're able to get them. I'll oh, check goalies too, just in case there's like a beast available. This guy here, Volalta, 23, 69. Good chance he's a medium starter. Uh, we can get him for free. I don't mind that at all. So I'll see what everyone says. We get everybody. Uh, it was a pretty easy free agency. Uh, is this Okay, for a second I thought that was Eric Comrie, but it's Evan Cormier. I just had to double check. I was like, no way. Okay, so I'll see what those guys say again. Don't have too much money, but if we get Krasov out of this already stacked team, we're looking pretty good. Haven't heard back from any free agents yet, but Arizona just offered us Dadanov and a fifth for a first and a third. I'm going to say no, though, like I was saying. Uh, we need cap space uh, next year, a lot of it for both Dodge and Krebs. So don't want to, like, you know, get us stuck. Uh, so Villatola here did accept our offer. I like that. Uh, same with this Jarvan guy. Hopefully he's elite. Obviously we'll know kind of after a season. Uh, Bode Wild accepted, so that's awesome. Our HL defense is going to be stacked. Uh, Krasov rejected. Are you kidding me? Uh, okay, so we offered him too long a contract. Maybe we got a little greedy, but there were so many good players available. Uh, we can definitely still go get another guy for the bomb six. All right, guys, this is kind of crazy. I'm looking through free agency right now. Mike Hoffman, 84 overall, only wants 2.8 million. Uh, JC Miller, same rating, wants 2 million more. Uh, same goes for Tana, who's a defenseman. Nuge. Um, also wants 2 million more. Now, uh, there is like a decent chance he has AHL potential, which I doubt though. He's 32. I feel like worst case, it's like medium top 9. Uh, so it is scaring me a little bit. Silverberg, though, on the other hand, uh, 83 overall, only wants 2.3, and he should be top 6 potential. So save 500k. Do lose 1 overall, but he's also the safer play. So I feel like this is a steal of a contract if we can get him. He wants 6 years though, which is a little too long. Okay, maybe that's actually why it's so cheap, because 6 years is like 37. I mean, I'd do 5 at like 2.4. I feel that's still a pretty good contract for an 83 overall. Um, then next up here, Malkin. I'm honestly thinking about signing too. Uh, basically just as insurance if we don't get Silverberg. Offer him like 2.75 for one year. Even Malkin at 35 it still feels a decent player. So Silverberg accepted our offer, which is pretty awesome. Our forwards are going to be stacked now. Uh, Malkin rejected. Uh, roster is full. So I th we actually might have enough cast space still, but uh, the roster is too big. So let's see if we can actually make a trade here. And then bring in Malkin. So right now, guys, I'm actually trying to trade Yanni Gore to the Hurricanes for a third and a fourth. Uh, I think he'd be on our fourth line, and he's making three million. So we could sign Malkin because we still need a center actually for less than that. And uh, he's this, actually one overall higher. So we'll see if we can get a third and a fourth back from Carolina. It'd actually probably be high picks as they are a rebuilder. Uh, so we'll see what they say. And trade accepted. So I'll uh, we'll go make Malkin another offer here. Uh, I think, honestly, our team's going to be very good this season. So after trading any Gord, guys, we actually have a little over 5 million in cap space. Like, we could sign Max Petrietti here, 86 overall. Uh, thing is, like, our top 6 is already stacked, so he's playing third line at that point. And as you can see, he also wants a multi-year deal, which isn't going to work for us. Um, I think most of these guys do. Kolvachuk doesn't. 85, though. He's 39 years old. I don't trust that rating. That could very quickly drop. Um, also Hoffman's still there, but we got Silverberg. So I was going to sign Mel can be our fourth line center. I kept looking though and saw that Patrice Bergeron is also available. Uh, he's a year older there at 36. Same potential though in top nine, assuming Malkins is correct. And he actually wants 300k less. And seeing as he's going to be playing fourth line center anyway, I feel like Bergeron's actually better fit as his defensive stats are still insane. 92 D awareness, 95 face offs, 84 shot block, 89 stick check. He's very slow now. He's got like 79 speed in that. But I mean... For a fourth line center, like Bergeron's about as good as you can get. Like 
He's going to win every face-off he goes out and takes. His defensive stats are insane. He'll probably like play penalty kill for us. So 36-year-old Bergeron, I will take it. He wants two years there at 2.5. One year, it's just as cheap. So let's see if he takes the one year. I guess we'll make sure we get him. So one year, 2.6. And obviously, if he plays well, we'll re-sign him next year. But like again, I think that could be like the best fourth-line center in the league. Another trade offer here. Uh, St. Louis wants to give us Palmieri, Ferk, and Schaller for Sandin and Moen. Uh, again, not really in a position to add more NHL players. Like, we already have more than enough, honestly. A bunch of high 70s that are going to be playing in the AHL. And Bergeron rejected. Not enough cash. I actually offered him more than he asked for. Okay, so that's kind of strange. All right, so after Bergeron rejected our offer, he jumped in rating from an 82 to an 83, and he now wants 3.4 million. I don't know how that happened, uh, like, a week or two into signing. So we do have the money to sign him. That's just super strange. I wish we would have done that after, like, you know, he said yes to us. So, uh, we'll try 3.5 here for one year. Again, it doesn't matter too much if it's a one-year deal, but I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. And Sandy just got an offer sheet from Florida for just over a million. Uh, so we can match it, and we're not going to get anything if we don't, so might as well. Um, if we bury him, it's still only costing us, like, 60k. And he'll definitely be buried, but rather, you know, pay that 60k and keep him. Also, Bergeron just accepted, so... Again, I think this team is going to be stacked. Try to make another trade here, guys, for a draft pick. Obviously, the last couple years, we haven't had too many high-end ones. So if we can trade Schuster here for a second-round pick, I think that's really good value. Uh, he's making $2.6 million for one more year, 81 overall. But the main reason I'm actually trading him is that uh, that one defense we drafted, I think, like in the first year or maybe the second year, uh, Vishnevsky here is now an 80, and his role is a top six with medium elite potential. I want to make sure he gets the ice time he needs to grow. Uh, 2019, actually, is when we drafted him. So... Uh, one overall below Schuster, but if we can get a second round pick back, I think it's definitely worth it. Schuster actually has more value than a second round pick. Um, maybe we can even add another pick on it. I'm glad I just kind of noticed there. I was like, that actually doesn't quite add up. First round pick's definitely too much, but second and a third, maybe we can get that through. And okay, trade's rejected. The second's definitely too little though, so let's try second and a fourth. The fourth, the third and the fourth definitely have a big separation. And there we go. So a second and fourth round pick for Schuster. That's like a lot to give up for New Jersey. Uh, plus they're a hopeful team, so they could even miss the playoffs. And as you can see now in this draft, like we're pretty loaded. We'll be the first year in a while we've actually had a good amount of picks, which I like. Obviously, like I was saying before, the core of this team is young. As you can see here, like Hughes 22, Krebs 21, Matthews 24, Dodge 21, Milroy 22. Uh, even Mishnevsky here is 22, same with Kachuk. Like a very good young team, but never hurts to have like prospects coming through. So uh, should be it, I think, for the summer. We'll sim through, see if we get any more growth, and then... Uh, see how the start of the season goes. As you guys can see here, Ty Smith still accepted our qualifying offer, and Chicago offers to him for $1.6 million for two years. Uh, definitely going to match as he's worth more than a third rounder. Unfortunately, going to have to bury him, and will you know cost us like 700 k I think the max bury is like 1.1 or 1, I forget. Uh, Nationals going to an offer. Doesn't look too good, though. Uh, Sandin's a pretty solid prospect. Allocator, a second and a third, plus we're getting him a third, fourth, fifth. It's a weird offer, definitely saying no to that. Also guys, before we start this season, I want to give you an updated look at the captaincy. I'm not sure last time I've shown this. Uh, so Carlson is still the captain, Spurgeon the alternate. I want to make sure I kept one alternate from the expansion draft. I think Spurgeon and Eklund were the only two guys left. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then Krebs there is the other alternate. Obviously our top pick in the first real draft. Absolute beast. I was thinking about maybe giving Matthews an A or a C, but good chance we lose Spurgeon after this year. So at that point... Uh, Maths will probably be the other alternate. And before we get started with the season, guys, I'm gonna give you a look at the lines. As you can see there, team stats is champion. So, I mean, we've had champion before, wasn't enough. Hopefully, this year is different. Uh, so, like I was saying, the team is stacked. We have Krebs, Matthews, and Caprizal on the first line. I mean, Krebs just keeps growing. Uh, Milroy's down at 87 as well. And the second line here with Dodge, who's also an 87. Uh, Kachuk now at 84. So, that three and a half million dollar contract looks so good. Same with the Hughes one. Uh, Bailey, Frost, and Spruev on the third line. Then we have Silverberg, Bergeron, and Timoshov on the fourth line. Probably got to be the best fourth line in the NHL. Uh, defense here is also stacked. You got Quinn Hughes and Carlson on the top pair. Uh, Shattenkirk and Vishnevsky on the second. Vishnevsky is now 82, so one higher. Um, then Schuster, definitely glad we got a second, round and or second and fourth round pick back for him. Uh, hopefully he plays really well there in the top four. And then you got Eckholm and Spurgeon on the bottom pair, so just a very solid bottom pair. Uh, goalies haven't changed. Samsonov still 90. And Sorokin there is still an 82. So again, the team is just solid throughout. I'll show you guys the power play quick, just show you how stacked it is. Dodge, Matthews, Krebs, Kaprizov, and Carlson's the first unit. And the second unit here is Milroy, Frost, Kachuk, Hughes, and Shattenkirk. Like, power play, the whole team is just insane. Um, AHL here, mostly like mid-70s on the team. 
uh, for the forwards, which isn't too bad. Like, it's good enough for the AHL. The defense, though, is insane. Uh, Ty Smith's now an 80. His role is top six, but we just don't have room for him. Uh, same with Nikolishin, 79, also top six. Bode Wild here is a 75. Sandin's a 78. Englund, Bernhardt. So, someone was saying I need to turn injuries on, so I have depth. Even with injuries off, I have depth. No worries there. Injuries just is so annoying to deal with. Um, Eric Sinek, a 75 starter, and then Enroth, 73 backup. So, both teams should make the playoffs and do awesome. I think last year our AHL team had like 105 points and missed the playoffs, but I'll see how this year goes. Excited, I think, you know, like I said, a few times already. Both teams are absolutely stacked. Hopefully it's enough. And right here, guys, our first look at this year's draft class. Uh, this Burr Hosky guy is the number one rated prospect. Actually plays for the Spitfires. Then there's this Foss dude. Uh, Buller Rice, medium elite. Uh, let's see here. Sean Couturier, who he's similar to. Scarlet there, who actually plays for Couturier's old team. Kruger, also medium elite, and Joe Thornton's his similar player. I'm wondering if we'll finally get our first, like, franchise player out of the draft, as as far as I know, we haven't gotten one yet, unless it was, like, a goalie in a mid-round I missed, but uh, all the top picks so far have all been medium elite. I don't even think we've seen a high elite, so I'm wondering if uh, this will be the year. And we're now in the middle of November, guys. As you can see here, record of 8-8, eight and eight, so not quite the start I was hoping for, considering how good this team is, but could be worse than 500. I'll probably give them at least till, like, the end of December before I make a big shake-up. Um, even the AHL team's not doing as good as I'd like, so maybe just a slow start for both teams. So it's in December here, guys. Started playing a little bit better. We're now 20, 15, and 1, so good enough to at least hold the team together till the trade deadline. AHL team, though, only 16, 15, and 5. Uh, we will see quickly just if we are in a playoff spot, and we are second place in the division, so that's pretty good. Carlson, the leading scorer. I was hoping maybe Matthews, one of our forwards, but that's all right. Montreal just offered us Lekkanen for a third-round pick. Uh, we'll see how good he is, because, I mean... It's not too bad of a price. Uh, 80 overall, so we already have Timoshov. But, I mean, an 80 overall at 930k. Oh, never mind. He's got one year left. I was thinking, if you sign for a couple more years, it'd actually be pretty solid. But, in this case, just going to say no. Just got another offer from Arizona. Want to give us Andreas Johnson for a first and a second. Uh, I'm not sure how good Johnson got in this uh, franchise. Because that seems like a pretty uh, expensive price. 85 overall. I mean, he's 28, so he's done growing. 85 is pretty good for a sense round pick, but... Um, first and a second seems a bit too pricey for me. I feel like we can get more for that. Also, wouldn't mind just keeping our first round pick this year and actually having one for the first time in two or three drafts. And we're at the trade deadline here, guys. As you can see, I have a record of 32, 28, and 3. So, uh, did a little worse since the last time we kind of checked our record. Let's see, if we're still in the playoffs. Uh, we're fourth place, so I guess it's not good enough. Um, let's see here. Central. Okay, we're actually tied though with Chicago. So, we're like just outside of wildcard spot. Uh, if we have a good run here after the deadline, should make it in the playoff. And Matthews is now a lean scorer there with 44 points. So definitely going to try and make a trade or two as this team should be playing better than they are. So don't want to just kind of keep it as is. Let's see if we can just hopefully improve it somehow. All right, guys, right now I'm trying to make a huge trade with Florida for Jack Hughes. I don't know why, but they have him on the trade block. 88 overall. Uh, right now, pretty good point production. 99 passing, 97 hand eye, most likely 99 deking as well. Like, the dude is insane. First overall pick back in 2019. I uh, still an entry level deal as well, so they're going to cost us a lot of money next summer, but right now we can sign him. No idea why I want to trade him either. Like, they have a pretty good team, it looks like, but he's on the block. So, offering them Osla here, medium league potential, defensive prospect. We already have some other very good defensive prospects. We don't really need him. Definitely expendable. With the second round pick, we got back for Schuster. If we can turn this into Jack Hughes, that's insane. Probably going to cost a little bit more, but might as well try this. Trade rejected. Okay, I figured that. So instead of the second round pick this year, we're going to try adding a first next year, just in case we somehow miss the playoffs this year. Uh, looks like this might get it done. The Valley's pretty even. We'll see what they say. Trade accepted. So a first round pick in Osla for Jack Hughes. Like, that's absolutely insane. Obviously, you're going to have a ton of cap problems this summer, but we can still fix that right now if we make a couple more trades. And I mean, our team now, Matthews, Hughes, Dodge. Frost, Bergeron, like we are so deep down the middle. All right, guys, so because we got Jack Hughes, I want to try and clear some cap space for next summer when we have to sign him, Krebs, and Dodge. Um, offering Dallas here, Kaprizov, who's a good forward, 86 overall, but making a little bit too much money, I think, at 7.2. Along with Josh Bailey, who's actually dropped in overall, now at 83, making $5 million for one more year. Chances are not going to resign him, uh, especially with a bunch of good young players coming up. Trying to get Honka back, though. Solid defenseman, 85 overall, plus he's cost controlled, uh, making 4.9 for the next six years. Uh, so the value's on our side. They actually want both forwards. After this, we can even trade for another forward. Obviously, Hughes replaces Kaprizov. Bailey, we'll see if we can kind of bring in another winger that's on the block or something. So we'll see what Dallas says here. And trade's accepted because we're calling up Jack Hughes, who apparently was in the uh, minors, along with Odd Debt. So there we go. 
I did see a couple decent wingers, and obviously, like I was saying, that clears up a lot of cap space for us, so we'll see if we can bring back a rental, and I think we should be good for this playoff run. Hopefully, all the moves we made that will be enough. All right, guys, so next up, trying to make a trade for Meyer here, uh, make our forward group even better, 85 overall, one year left, uh, making just under 5 million, pretty good point production so far. Um, offering them Ekholm as don't really need him now that we just got back Honka, plus making 2.9 for the next four years, 32 years old, he might start to regress, and we have a good bunch of good young defensemen who could definitely pass him. Kostitsin's low top six, he's an okay prospect they want. Uh, Volta here, 71, which isn't too bad, but they want him. If, if he gets us Meyer, I'm definitely willing to trade him, and then a second round pick there. Um, we'll see what Boston says, obviously I think Meyer would be a great addition to the team. And trade accepted, so there we go. Honestly, our team is insane now. All right, guys, here's a look at the lines after the trade deadline. I really like how this team's looking. Uh, Krebs, Matthews, and Milroy is the first line. Meyer, Hughes, and Kachuk is the second. Totally forgot, too, when we traded for Jack Hughes that we also have Quinn Hughes, so just united the Hughes brothers after not getting either in the draft, so that's kind of sick. Uh, Silverberg, Dodge, and Frost here is the second line. Actually, I want to have Silverberg on the right side there. And then Timoshov, Bergeron, and Spruev is the fourth line, so... I mean, the center depth's kind of amazing. Uh, defense there, you got Quinn Hughes and Carlson, Honka, Shattenkirk, and then Vishnevsky and Spurgeon. Uh, probably going to lose both Spurgeon and Shattenkirk this summer as they're on expiring deals, but have like Ty Smith coming up, a couple other guys. Saves us cap space and obviously get younger. Goalies haven't changed, still Samson off Sorokin. And I'll show you guys the power play too. Like, look at this first power play. You got Hughes in the middle, who's got 9-9 passing. Uh, Carlson and Matthews is on the point, and then Milroy and Krebs on the wing, like it's insane. The second one, Meyer, Dodge, Kachuk, Hughes, and Honka. Like, this team is so good. Hopefully we make the playoffs, that's still not even a guarantee, and then if we do make the playoffs, we should be able to do some damage. Alright guys, so regular season is now over, finished the record of 44, 35, and 3, so not too bad. 91 points, it's gonna be close. Um, AHL team there, 46, 30, and 6, so they started actually doing a lot better after the deadline. Let's see if we made the playoffs or not. <laughs> With this team not making the playoffs, it would be a travesty. We did make the playoffs. Okay, I was really worried. 91 points. We got a wild card spot. We're actually the lowest points by quite a bit. Luckily, uh, next close to there, Chicago, 85. Matthews lead score there, 60 points. I still can't believe we got Matthews and Jack Hughes on this team. Like, that's pretty insane. Still don't know why Florida put him on the deadline. He was actually second leading scorer, 59 points. Carlson, 54, minus 12, though. Same with Krebs. Uh, Meyer, 51. Dodge 44, Quinn Hughes at 42, Kachuk had 40, I don't know, Dodge had minus 19, that's not too good. Uh, 40 points for Frost as well, Shanker 38, Milroy 34, never does like score a lot, but still a uh, pretty high rated player. Bergeron put up 23, he did drop in rating, you guys probably saw 81, but I saw Malkin actually when I was looking through the trading block, and he's like a 79 now. I will check to the goalies, see how Samsonov did, 34, 31, and 2. Could definitely have done better. 0.909 and 2.73. Uh, Sorokin, 10 and 4 and 1, 0.927. Maybe Samsonov's stats are weird. Like, I don't know. They look pretty good. I guess, I don't know, glove low, stick low, all that could be a bit higher. His best stats are definitely athletic. Like, 97 speed, agility as a goalie. It's pretty insane. Uh, so we'll go and check on the highest rated score in the league now. As you can see there, Brock Bester put up 90 points. Uh, Tarasenko, 87 on the Preds. McDavid there, 85. Same with Barkov, Kucherov, 84. McKinnon actually went to Vegas, has 84. I think Tarasenko just resigned two, obviously. Uh, now in Nashville, uh, Eichel, 84, line 83. I'll check the AHL too. I don't think we'd have like a lean score, but I mean, our AHL team wasn't that bad. So we'll see kind of just what they ended up with in terms of stats. Nermi here, 65. Ty Smith, 56. He'll probably have another big growth this summer, which is another reason why I'm probably not going to bring back Shankirk or Spurgeon. Um, we also have Nick Lishin at 52 points, so, I mean, two defense in that 50-plus point season in the AHL. Those, are, those guys are both making the NHL next year. I mean, they also both have top six roles. Uh, let's see, uh, Dead at 53. He always just a good AHL player. Um, all right, so, pretty good season there for both teams. Let's see, actually, if AHL team made the playoffs, because they've gotten screwed the last two seasons. All right, they finally made it there, but still it was close. 98 points. They had the... Okay, wow. Yeah, our division's just so good. The three teams above them, all 100-plus, but... I'll check now and see who we play in the playoffs. Hopefully, maybe this is the year finally win the Stanley Cup. Let's see what happens. So the first round of the playoffs, we're up against the Dallas Stars. Uh, ben Sagan and Grianov is the first line. We got this Drummelson dude, Zabinijad, and Forsberg on the second. McGinn, Rust, Nordstrom on the third. Landra, Hintz, and Koivu on the fourth. So our fourths are definitely better. Defense here, they have a sick top pair. Heiskanen and Klingberg. Uh, second pair here, they have 
Honka and Lindell. How is... Okay, this mustn't be updated. That's what it is. I was going to say we traded for Honka, so I guess we haven't played Dallas um, since the deadline. For a second there, I thought there was like something messed up. Cuckoo and Severson there on the bottom pair. I mean, we did give up actually a lot, though, I just realized, for Honka. So they're going to have Kaprizov on this team, um, as well as Josh Bailey. So a bit of a revenge match, maybe. Goalies there. Bishop, of course. All right. So, I mean, I like our team a lot better, I think, honestly. Looking through the teams on the train, when I was doing the train block and stuff, like, we have the best team in the NHL on paper. So should be able to uh, win here. First game is actually in Dallas, which is kind of crazy, like, we're a wild card team. I mean, better than not making the playoffs, right? So, first game, first period. Here we go. Uh, Bergeron scores. Kaprizov scores for them. Of course, he does on his old team. Next period here. Hughes for us. Been a Jack for them. So, Jack Hughes looking good. Meyer for us. And then Drummelson second each score. Okay. So, a close game there in the first uh, first game. But, lose it, of course. 4-3. to three. I don't know. The playoffs in the this franchise mode seem like so just unlucky. Cup or bust, we have like less years. It's only three total. Maybe she can have better luck there. I don't know what it is with this expansion team. Um, hopefully it can bounce back, though. At least the first game was close. Um, so we're down one early. Now it's 2-1. Forsberg for them. Milroy for us. And wow, Sagan and Benny score. Timishov does get one. Unfortunately, it's not enough. So down 2 nothing in the series. Luckily, you're head home now. Hopefully uh, can tie this thing up. Maybe we just need like the home crowd behind us. I'm pretty sure like the last... I think we, we made the playoffs three of four years, and we were first round exit two of those years, and I think the other year we were a second round exit and maybe made the conference final. I don't think so, though. I think we got knocked out in the semifinal. Just playoffs never go our way. So third game here. There we go. Dodge opens up the scoring. Ben gets one for them. Carlson for us. And there we go. Jack Hughes puts it away. So a big 3-1 win. Again, like I was saying, I need to, or we need to hopefully tie this up here. Uh, if we can do that, obviously it just becomes a three-game series. Looks like the AHL team actually lost the, uh, or sorry, they have one game left because best of five, but they're down right now, so that's not a good look. All right, here we go. Game four. Um, Klingberg for them. Nothing in the second. Come on, need a big third. And Jamie Ben gets one there. Okay, so definitely not where we want to be. Down 3-1 of the Stars right now. I don't get it. Like, we looked at their team. Obviously, assume Honk is out. Kaprizov and Bailey are in. I still like our team so much more. I just, I do not get it. Uh, I know people are saying about game, like, player style and stuff, but I think we have a good mix. Like, power forwards, offensive defensemen, whatever. Here we go. First period, game number five. Matthews and Dodge each score. Griana for them. Uh, Krebs gets one. And, okay. Wow, Shattenkirk, Dodge, Milroy. Dodge gets another. Did Dodge get a... Did he get a hat trick that game? I think he had one in the first, didn't he? He did, so Dodge the big hat trick. He went off. That's awesome to see. So the boys did not want to go out yet. A big 7-2 win there. That was actually in Dallas as well. So now we're coming back, have a chance to tie the series. That'd be pretty crazy. Um, HL team, though, did end up losing that series 3-2. So they put up a fight, unfortunately. Uh, just didn't have enough. So here we go. Game 6. Need this win to stay alive. Um, not a good first. Heiskin in. Kaprizov. Are you kidding me? Kaprizov gets 2. Where was this last year for us? Like, he was never, like, a playoff, I don't know, big-time playoff player. Uh, Matthews low gets one, so at least we have a chance. Uh, oh, there we go. Frost and it's Jack Hughes. Forsberg for them. So, we need one goal here to tie it up in the third. And no one scores. So, I don't know. I don't know. Like, this team might be cursed, honestly. Uh, five years in, four playoff appearances, and I don't think we made a conference final. I could be wrong. I know what, like, we have two, that's three first round exits, and the one year I can't remember was semifinal conference final. I know for sure, have not made the Stanley Cup final, but that's just, oh, that's just, I hate it. And check this out, guys. Florida has the first overall pick this year in the draft, so they trade away first overall pick Jack Hughes, and then they win the first overall pick. Kind of seems like that might be the new Edmonton, I don't know. Uh, I think this is the last time we get to look at the draft class, so we'll see. Are there any franchise players? There is, look at that. We were talking about it. Uh, Berhoski here, however you say his name, medium franchise, and he plays for the Spitz as well. I feel like we gotta try and get him off of Florida. I don't know what it's gonna cost, but I feel like it's worth it. I mean, we could definitely make it happen. Jeez, so he put up, what is that, uh, 93 points in 66 games in the junior. He's a center, franchise potential, similar style Wayne Gretzky. I think that's the first time I've ever seen that. That's insane. Uh, this Scarlet guy's new. Theo Fleury. 
Kruger, I think we already saw. Dimitrakos, similar style, none. This boss guy, we have like no info on, okay. So, Burhoski here, plays for my hometown team, the Spitz, and similar style, Wayne Gretzky. I doubt we can make a trade with Florida for him. I mean, we could offer like Hughes and Matthews, although that doesn't really make any sense. Um, so, retired players here, you got Joe Thornton, finally retiring at the age of 43. Geez, 1,600 points, not a bad career. Stall there, 1,100. Bergeron retires. Wasn't going to bring him back anyway, but still, uh, he had a pretty good year for us. Vanek there, finally calls it a career. Who knows? Let's see how many teams this guy played for. Um, let me go back here. Full, full career stats. Was he jumping around? The oh, it doesn't show a team. Never mind. That sucks. It would been kind of cool to see all the different teams. Williams there, Miku Koivu, Krejci, Steen, a free agent, Bobby Ryan. Kind of young, actually. Was he 36? Oshi. Felino there, Bozak, uh, Edler, also a free agent, Niskanen. I mean, a bunch of guys that, like, aren't too old right now. Like, a lot of guys kind of retiring early here, 35-ish. Anton Strahlman, face of the thumbnail. Patrick Moon there on the Red Wings. Boychuk, Jarmelson. I'm going to take a quick look here at the goalies as well. Lunkfist finally retires. 1,083 games played. I mean, that's incredible. 41 years old. Roberto Luongo, though, I think is still kicking. Halak retires as well. That's insane. All right, so... Uh, I guess we'll take a look at the awards or whatever. Matt Niskanen is actually now a scout. Maybe we'll uh, give him a hire. I think, like, next year, we're going to be a younger team, like I was saying. Probably can't afford to bring back Spurgeon and Shattenkirk. Uh, the Jets here, by the way. Stanley Cup champs. Jack Hughes, 7 points in 6 games. Let's actually take a look at the uh, playoff tree and how our players did in the playoffs. So, Jack Hughes, the guy we added. Best playoff player. Over a point per game. Stay with Krebs and Carlson. So, I mean... Like, those are the three best players on our team, and they showed up. Matthews had five, so better than last year's playoff. Dodge, like, I don't get it. Is it, do we have to get a different goalie? Like, what are Samsonov stats? Those aren't the greatest stats. Maybe we have to trade Samsonov. Like, I thought he'd be the goalie for the rest of this franchise because he's so young and 89 overall, but I don't know. Maybe his stats are in the wrong space. Like, you can see he's a very athletic goalie, 97 speed, good durability, but his glove hand could be better. Same with his stick. Um... I don't know, like, Poise is also only an 80. Definitely, maybe that's where we'll have to look, because the players look to be pretty good. Uh, and some playoff tree here. Winnipeg beat the Maple Leafs in the Stanley Cup Final. They actually swept them. Wow, look how good Winnipeg is. So they went seven games in the first round with Colorado, and then didn't lose another game after that. It's kind of crazy. Colorado gave them the toughest matchup in the first round. Swept Dallas, swept the Ducks, swept the Leafs. That's kind of insane. Um... Jeez, so Winnipeg is still just an absolute juggernaut. Uh, let's see, who won the Presidents? I think I forgot to check that, actually. Uh, Dallas there. Winnipeg, Clarence has Campbell. Prince of Wales, obviously Toronto. Uh, Besser there, one there at Ross. Andy Hart. James Norris with the Thomas Shabbat. So, I mean, Ottawa now has another James Norris Trophy winner. Not too long later. Uh, Kucherov, Lady Bing. Sam Steele with the Calder. Um, Sam Steele was a rookie like five years ago, so this one doesn't really make any sense. I have no idea how he's winning the Calder. His rookie year is 2018-19. Even if they sat him, it'd be 19-20. Ah, that's, this is a weird one. Uh, Colin Smythe, Hellebeck, Bobrovsky there, the, the Vezna again, and the William Jennings. Uh, Bill Masterson, Josh Manson. His year with the Selkie is kind of interesting. Uh, Besser, Ted Lindsay, and Reese Richard. So, Besser just went off this year. AHL, gonna take a quick look. I doubt we got any. I'm not even recognizing any of the names. Shea Weber's in the AHL right now, one best defenseman. Montreal should trade. I'm like, wow, we did it for the cover bust. Let's see. Uh, yeah, a lot of just Miku Koskinen, I guess, is in the AHL for the Flyers now. And Team Awards, Hartford won the Calder Cup. And I don't think... Yeah, we didn't win anything there. So, I don't know. Like I was saying, I think the skaters on this team are good enough. We're going to be younger next year. We're going to have, like, Jack Hughes could grow. Like, all of our young players could grow. So, we could have even just higher rated guys. Like, Matthews is still getting better. Like, our whole team is getting better. Maybe Samsonov, though, we just have to look to trade for, like, a more, I don't know, veteran goalie. Like, maybe go for John Gibson, Vasilevsky. I feel like we could probably even just do Samsonov in a one-for-one. One. Um, I think that's definitely what we have to look, though, to do next year. If you guys have any other ideas of your own, definitely let me know in the comments section. But other than that, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Also, if you guys aren't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.